All right, so this is our dry run of the uh, paint portrait uh, interview slash, um, I don't know what to call this really. Do you have any names? I guess we could talk about that while we're... Oh God, put me on the spot. No. Or let's uh, we'll introduce each other, I guess. This is Devon Lawrence. He runs the Norfolk Drawing Group, amongst anything, and then of course, Artist, I mean, you call yourself a watercolor artist or artist, or do you, um, ha do you do subscribe to those labels? Um, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. Usually, I'm like local artist, local artist, like when I'm like working with public arts commission people, like I'm a local artist. You're a local artist, yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah, I can kind of. I can get behind that as far as you know then people realize you know you're not like or I'll say my primary medium is watercolors watercolors yeah there there so, you go yeah watercolor artist yeah so that's about it yeah it's it's funny cuz some people were like what kind of artist are you and they're like I don't know uh, well usually it's people who aren't artists who Try to break down things like that. Yeah, they they need to categorize you. I do a lot of work in digital, but I don't really consider myself a digital artist. Definitely no. not primarily. No. Especially nowadays, a lot of, a lot of artists will mess around with Procreate and I like other that. random iPad, iPad stuff and. Don't move. We're gonna we're gonna go with that one. Oh, that, see, okay. that's what I was looking for. All right, let me zoom that in a little bit. There, yeah, there we go. Yeah, and maybe we'll leave the glasses on, but yeah, that's it. That's perfect. Okay. So we'll go ahead and swap that one out. Ah, the joy of technology. There we go. And so we'll see if I can switch this one over. Yes. No. I may take a bit. I'll wait for that. Besides, I'm relying on you anyways. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, it's funny how people label artists. Um, I'll tell you, it, it, it runs a gamut. So what are some of the things that you've uh, have run into as far as an artist and general public perception of artists or someone who's not an artist has a different perspective oh. or a... Uh, how would you say a um, what do you call those? A misperception. What are some of the pet peeves you would have? I don't know. I, it, you go first. I'm trying to think about this. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, I think uh, our friend Ed had a, had an interesting post uh, on social media about I guess somebody he knew. Uh, wanted a discount and it was a cat I, I get from the post that was a casual acquaintance they'd never bought any work before and they wanted a discount okay they wanted the discount and it's like and Ed answered it really well he's like you you haven't bought any work from me <laughs> why should I give you a discount well it burns me it burns me when they do it at galleries too well that's all my family Discounts. They're like, can I get a discount? I'm like, I still have to pay bills. Yeah, yeah. And we'll waste time on your piece. Or the person that wants like a free piece. Even worse. Because I have a cousin who wants me to do a. I'm, I'm blasting my cousin. I have a cousin who don't wants to. Don't say me, any names. I'm not going to say any names. <laughs> I don't care really. Um, But I have a cousin. I have a lot of cousins. Who wants me to do a logo design first I'm not a graphic designer and I told him that but he wants me to do a logo design he's not paying me <sighs> and I was like I was being nice I'm like if I can fit it in between projects sure but I've been so busy I haven't touched it and at this rate I won't be able to touch it Yeah, a lot, of, you get a lot of freebie wanting people, and 
the discount stuff. Usually, that's what I get from family. And occasionally, I get friends discounts, but that's because I want to. It's not like they ask, can I get a discount? Yeah, that's that's always seems to be the thing with me is is that you know they want a discount and you're just like ah oh. it it it's I don't really have so much family I have actually take 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 back I have I won't say which family but it was if someone I haven't met in a long like I don't I can't remember the last time I met them like I think it was like when I was. I honestly can't remember so it was like a distant relative and they wanted me to do a logo as a design and I did one and then they took forever to pay me and I had to literally send them I was already giving them a discount and I literally had to send them a a uh, a bill like you're overdue and now it's costing you a person you know extra percentage more and they got really nasty with me. Did they actually pay? They did pay. I'm shocked. But I don't know. Um, there's more to the story. I know, but I don't know enough to go kind of into it. You know what I mean? It's just like there's something. And I know that this business, the business for it uh, fell apart. So... Oh, okay. So there, there's obviously certain things going on beyond my knowledge, and you know, it's kind of like ah, uh, I'm kind of glad I wasn't really too involved with this to begin with. You know what I mean? Okay. But yeah, it, it's, people want things for free, and it's you know, it, it, it's it's like we have to pay bills too. I actually had a relative this is before I started taking deposits. And I was still in college. It was pro probably my first or second year of college. He commissioned me for a piece. And I'm like, cool. I didn't even ask for a lot. I think it was, I don't know, 100 bucks or something. Mm -hmm. Something really cheap. And it was a lot of work. So I did the piece. I gave it to him. He didn't pay me the full amount. He gave me like, I don't know, 20, 40 bucks or something. Mm -hmm. And then later I tried to collect the money from him, the rest. He's like, yeah, I'm not paying that. <laughs> but he already had the piece too. Oh, no. No. He had the piece he too? Had, he had the piece and he's like, yeah, I'm not going to pay you the rest. Oh, no. That's, that's bad. But funny part about that story, so that was many, many years ago, because, mm -hmm. you know, college, a long time ago. But recently, I think maybe in the last couple of years, I think two years ago, he tried to commission me for a piece, and I was like, nope. Yeah. Because like Because you, you burnt me when I was young and starting out. I'm not even going to consider... <laughs> doing anything for you and it's like you didn't it's like you, you're, you're like, gonna forget I, that yeah do you not remember they probably don't he I'm does gonna, no he does no he he de he definitely does oh man he definitely does That's and one of his relatives I, i'm jumping around so i don't uh -huh. reveal who it is one of his relatives actually has the piece so, so he doesn't even have it anymore, but one of his relatives does. Yeah. So I've seen it. Oh, man. On a person's wall. And I'm like, oh, hey, I remember you. Did you feel like, you know, just like uh, taking it down and just like, yo, this is mine. See ya. Bye. Uh, it was a learning experience. Um, so now I've moved on. I'm like, whatever. But I won't do any work for him. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like once you've been burned, you know, you don't want to do that. You definitely don't want to do that. That's not a cool thing. So, but that was funny when he tried to give me a, do a piece a couple of years ago. Yeah, it's like, like really. Yeah. No. Yeah, they were they were. Uh, I just remember the letter I got afterwards. It was a it was a uh, email, and they were so indignant about it. And it's like, and I think 
you know, it was like, we don't really know each other. You know, it's like, I can't remember the last time I've seen you. And, you know, they're, so they're kind of like using the family card, but you haven't, we're not close by any means. We don't get Christmas cards. You don't even call on Christmas, my birthday or any of that. And, you know, it's just like, we just know each other from a single relative, you know? Hmm. And that's it. And it's just like, oh man, come on, really? You know, and I remember that, you know, at that point, you know, money was a little bit tight. So I was glad for the business, but I wasn't, you know, like you're not ready to chalk it up as a, you know, up. So that's a, I'll just take this as a loss and an and education moment. That's definitely not, you know, for me, I, I needed the money. And so, yeah, I think, I think that's kind of, I don't know. I was, I was, I was hesitant to send it. The, the invoice with the increase, the late fees, I should say, is really what it came down to be. Mm. But yeah. Yeah. But, luckily enough, I've never had to deal with like that type of situation mm -hmm. in this half of my life. Yeah. It, it, it can, it can be frustrating for sure. Definitely for sure. So, um, all right, I don't know why that's not showing up. It's like I've got two photos of it now. Where is your, um, where was your pin? It'll probably show up like five times in a minute. If you guys are wondering what I'm talking about, uh, just so that Devon doesn't feel like he has to stay still, I have a monitor to my left that I can, I'll have for this pose. So if I, he moves, I can, I can, I can refer to that. But yeah, it, it is, it's, it's definitely frustrating for sure. So who, who, I know we were said we were going to talk about art. So who are some of the artists? I know you brought some books. Um, and I think we'll lay the groundwork uh, work on this as maybe we'll, we won't speak ill of any of these artists. <laughs> oh, okay. But maybe, um, you know, maybe we'll just, you know, talk about what we like about them. But I would say any, any old artists are, are fair game. <laughs> dead. <laughs> dead. I didn't want to say dead, you know, but yeah, dead artists, fair game. Well, how would you say, maybe we should put this as like, you know, uh, not recently dead. That's kind of like kicking the grave. <laughs> no, I don't think I have any favorites that are recently dead. No. But we're talking about favorite artists or Yeah, favorite artists. Um like Jeffrey Jones. Oh yeah. He's great. I remember uh Bostic, our illustration teacher, he introduced me to him. Or she. Jeffrey she, Catherine Jones. Catherine Jones, yeah. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. You know, it was crazy. There's a great documentary about her, too. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm... I have a copy of it. I'll let you watch it. Oh. Yeah, that would be cool. But yeah, it's a great documentary. I think oh. in the last days of Facebook, uh, I, I'd like taken a photo through, like, from my phone through binoculars of, um, it wasn't any art, but I took a photo just as like an experiment. It was just kind of a very interesting. It was like a photo of a light pole through the binoculars mm -hmm. and this is the myspace days and i we were friends and they actually she she i should say not they but she yeah. actually commented on it. i was like wow oh really yeah and oh, i was wow. like wow that's really cool of course it wasn't any of my art at that time so you know which oh, wow. but still it's like you felt connected you know it's like at that point you know you feel a, a brief connection and then i think like um about well, maybe six months later, or even if that, she was gone. Yeah, towards the end of her life, she wasn't doing great. No. Um, living wise, um, like if you check out the documentary, you'll hear more about that. Mm -hmm. Was it due to surgery or? No, it was just like financially, she wasn't doing great. I know. Yeah, because it's like it's. Which, yeah. uh, hard to understand how that happened. 
I kind of understand it because at this point, you know, it's uh, there's not the infrastructure to make money. As well, her artist. stuff was selling, it's so, still selling now at like crazy amounts. So I don't know what happened. Mm, sometimes artists aren't good promoters of themselves, and you know they they're relying on other people. Or, you know, especially with, like, back in the day of the old school model of having an art school, uh, not art school, but a, a art rep, yeah. you know? I think maybe, you think maybe that might have played into it? I don't know. I bit? think, if I recall correctly, she has some mental issues. And well, I'm sure that there's got to be something. I mean, yeah, there, there's a, a bunch of like that. random things going on in her life. But, so. you know, when, when you make, when you make, when you, when you get to a point where you make a decision like that, you know... Uh, I'd imagine there's got to be, you know, there's got to have been some, how would you say, do you think, I'm kind of the prescribes that, you know, deep inside you were probably, they were probably all felt like that from their, their whole life. And so yeah. because of the culture back then, it was, you know, hard for her to come out uh, as she truly was. And because of that, then, you know, it, it it's uh you know, it's, well, it's funny because from what I recall, um, she would cross dress and she was kind of out around friends. But back then, since it wasn't like common, she didn't transition until late in life, like very late in life. So I think that probably was why she had so many mental issues because mm -hmm. she had to like wait so long to actually transition. Right, and it's it's tough because you you know you especially in the early two thousands and late nineties it still it wasn't really widely accepted. No, no, definitely wasn't widely accepted. Definitely wasn't, you know. I still think a society doesn't accept a lot of it. Um, it's gotten a lot better. It's gotten better, but it could be so much. It could be so much more. Yeah, it, it could. It could. It could be but so much more. Better. The fact that you have. TV shows about it, and you have actors and actresses who are trans mm -hmm. on regular shows now. Yeah, it's just they're not acceptance. like these comic characters that you would see in like '80s films. Like, oh, that that person's a deviant because they cross dress. Yeah, they're always like weird characters. Yeah, yeah. So, what were, what were some of the things about Jeffrey Jones's work oh, no. that you? No. Or Painters. Jeffrey Catherine Jones, yeah. I should say, is uh, what you what would you say was really inspiring about her work? That just a classic painter style composition. Some he definitely studied some N. C. Wyeth. Mm hmm. Like you know, classic illustrator. Yeah, fantasy illustrator. She really specialized in that. Yeah, and even like some of her stuff that wasn't like fantasy was like really good. Um, it's unfortunate she didn't live a long life. No, I feel like she would, you know, if she had lived longer, that, you know, she she would definitely would have, have gotten benefited uh, from. Yeah, I would just say a second, um, a second wind yeah. in her career. Yeah, do you think, especially in in this day and age of like high fructose magazine and oh yeah. Because I've seen that whole, they call it a new contemporary arts scene. That scene is like huge now. Mm -hmm. And all of it's like illustration based, even though most people are like, we're fine artists, although labels are labels. Yeah, I'm kind of not into labels anymore. It's not, yeah, it's just not, I don't know, it's just not me. Well, usually it's the collectors that, Put the labels on everybody. Oh, I think it's that the person, galleries and the, sell, well, the resellers. I think they want the label. That too, but most of the people I follow don't even deal with galleries. And that's like a almost a thing of the past. I think you're right. I, th I mean, if we're going to talk about galleries to some degree, I think I think that you know collectors, not all collectors, but there's you know I think a lot of that is definitely uh, changing. The landscape is definitely changing. Um, how that that's playing out that's Cause most of the best artists are like selling work through their instagram account mm -hmm. 
they have links to their store on Instagram or they're like DM me basically send a message if you don't know about Instagram send I think me a everybody message. knows about Instagram now well some <laughs> people don't know what YouTube DM is not know about Instagram there's some older people you never yeah, know I mean but they're not they're not that many out there there's some older people because I, I'll have some people come to my demos oh like, yeah are you on Instagram? Because I barely update my website. Actually, I don't update my website. Although I'm paying for it. Um, but usually, well, not even usually, but the Instagram's updated way more than my website. Yeah, it's it's easier. I mean, even though... It I, is way easier. Because I, I can like just take a photo from my phone, instant click... My website, I got to edit the photo and do a whole bunch of other weird stuff. I just don't want to do it. The only reason I keep it is because of my domain name, mm -hmm. which I don't want to lose. Yeah, you don't want to lose that. That's for sure. Although I don't have .com. I have .net. Oh, you can um, probably get .com. I can get .com now. When I first got my website, I couldn't. Somebody was using it. It's free now, but there's a company holding it hostage. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I mean, it's not they, that important. As they, long as you have yeah. some kind of website. You don't yeah. have to have, yeah. your, you know, DevonLawrence.com. I couldn't even get DougClark.com if I wanted to. And I really didn't want to because okay. of that Sunset Killer. You know, like, who wants to, who wants to be associated with that? Well, he has your name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, uh, um, and, you know, I don't want to go into it too much, but, uh, you know, he he's up there with. Uh, I mean, as far as how how horrendous the crimes he committed, you know, it, it's just as as horrendous as you know Jeffrey Dahmer, which is like he has fans. Okay. I don't know if he's alive or dead now. Uh, I don't, Dahmer or the other guy. The other guy. Okay. Yeah, we won't refer to him. We kind of know the name, <laughs> so let's not plug him anymore. But yeah, and I didn't. I, don't, I really didn't want to get those. You know, those fans. I was afraid of getting fans. Oh yeah yeah yeah. You know, like, hey, and you're like, no, I don't, don't want to. <laughs> yeah, you don't want. That's just not a fan, uh, a fan base you want, or even even a mix up. Well, it's funny. Like most people who have my name are female. There's a lot of. That's not too bad, is it? I mean, it could be. No, a, it's not too bad. It could um, be a serial killer. Yeah. And now there's a football player. I think it's college. Mm -hmm. who has my name and that's not that bad but it can make things harder for you to promote you yeah well, right now I'm not too worried about promotion um, word of mouth and stuff with Facebook yeah has been fun with me maybe in the second stage of my career second stage uh, I'm, I'm not there yet I'm not Doug, I'm not even I'm, at the first stage I'm yet. not Doug Clark yet I'm not even first stage yet. I'm still, yeah. you know, you're a little ahead, ahead of me. Um, I've got a YouTube channel and you don't. <laughs> actually, that's, that's false. I do have a YouTube channel. Do you have anything on YouTube yet? Yes, I do. It's just not art related. It's like what? Is, what is it? Um, some cat videos. You have cat videos of my cat. Okay. Does it get a lot? It probably gets more hits than I no, get. No, it doesn't. I'm sure it does. No, it doesn't. I don't even have a hundred like views on any of. No, my I stuff, don't have I think. Me either. And not um, any of my new stuff. So cat videos. I have one video of a friend dancing from Oklahoma, which has all the views. Are we talking our mutual friend from Oklahoma? No, no, you, you never met this person. Okay. Um, one of the cousins. So okay, that gotcha. had that has some views, but it's not even a lot. It's like ninety seven. Which is nothing. It's been up there for like, I don't know, six, seven years. Oh wow! Yeah, there's so many videos on YouTube. You'll, you can pass by some somebody's stuff. Yeah, yeah, you could totally do that. You'd have to know about it, or YouTube recommend it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I did post a video of one of our artist friends dancing with another artist friend. Which I'll show you after. Later. Yeah, <laughs> I did post that just because one of our mutual friends really wanted to see it. I told her about it. I'm like, I had this video from way back when. Mm -hmm. 
So I just put that up there like last week. Oh wow. Yeah, it's it's you know, I mean But yeah, I have a channel. <laughs> YouTube is I think the problem with YouTube and maybe it's just me, I feel like YouTube just doesn't have the um it doesn't maybe I'm wrong, but I don't feel like it has a community like the the Facebook does. Am I wrong on that? Um, I think you're wrong because I do follow. Do you think it's gotten better than what it used to be? Maybe it, it used to not be as as much, but oh no. yeah, it's gotten way better because I follow. Um, thanks to when I was buying a car, I follow a bunch of car channels now. Oh yeah, because I I was look, going to YouTube for reviews at one point, and then YouTube started recommending stuff, mm -hmm. and I got sucked into the. YouTube car community, which is huge. I bet it is. And everybody, all the big channels know each other. They're like, okay, that's such and such, and that's such and such. And sometimes they cross over and mm -hmm. meet each other. So, yeah, it's YouTube's pretty big. And even the art community up there, once you get a following, mm -hmm. um, usually people are like posting stuff on Instagram and then they're like, follow me on YouTube. And that's how you start your basic following on YouTube art wise. Gotcha. Cause there's a lot of art channels right now. So you could dig through tons of junk. Junk. Yeah. I mean, I can imagine, you know, some people would view it as junk, but I mean, I, I think, well, like, everybody's trying to make money now. So it's like, you know, you have everybody, you know, their mom trying to make a, YouTube channel. Well, I think the thing is, is that why I'm doing this and why we're, 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 you know, taking the time is I really feel like now more than ever, I have the ability to connect more, uh, with people in a way that I, I haven't been. And how would you say, uh, people get to see more of a process than just a photo. And, and it's like the Facebook, I just, I get tired of this like nonlinear timelines, messed up algorithm. And, you know, I mean, I'm still getting wished happy birthday, like now. <laughs> See, I stopped doing that stuff. Well, I That's like why I sent you a that. text. <laughs> I, like to, I like to do that because I, I don't have the numbers and I feel like, you know, I think it's one of those, it, it, it's still. Well, I don't like to do it because you get buried. Because 200 people leave a happy birthday for you. I, I, and you really don't, I don't know, after the 50th person, you're like, okay, I get it. Yay. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I feel like um, it, it, it helps. I think it helps work against the algorithm. I think it helps people that, you know, where kind of, you know, the algorithm is kind of knocked you out, helps keep you in touch with them. Uh, there's some artists that I have followed and then Facebook decides that, oh, you haven't, you haven't clicked on a like. And so we're going to like take them out of the feed. You know what I mean? Well, that's why I follow everybody on Instagram. Well, Instagram is owned by Facebook, though, yeah, and but the it's, same it's thing still, is starting to happen. It's still better. It's still not better. Not by much, and it's all gonna. It's all gonna go. To, yeah, it's all gonna go downhill. But they've already started with the algorithm, the messed up algorithm parts now. So I yeah, mean, it's, it's already it's been started. that way because I follow a lot of people, and I definitely don't see everybody. Yeah, you don't see everybody in the way they're that like, you you're want. You're scrolling and they're like, you've caught up. And you're like, no, because I follow like 200 artists. Yeah. There's no way I've caught up. They want to curate this and they don't realize that for some of us, we don't want curation. We want just a stupid timeline because we're willing to spend the hours to catch up, you know? Well, they, they want to make money. So it's all about money. If it wasn't money based... Yeah, they won't need a sponsor. But they could still do that and not screw with everything, you know. In theory, yes. They could. They could still do. They could still do it and not screw with everything. But they're they're screwing with everything, and that's why I like. I'm looking at like YouTube, and it's like someone can go to on my YouTube channel, you know, my YouTube page or whatever you want to call it, 
and they can then catch up on everything and it's not hidden. Well, mm. that's why you have to do like multiple social media like sites because there's no perfect You're right. There's no perfect. There's no perfect site. Nah. You have to do the multiple thing and keep networking and advertising. It sucks, but Yeah, you're a hamster in the wheel. But I think but I will say all those social media sites are better than web pages now because I get no traffic even when I was updating my web page. You got I get it. traffic on Instagram and I barely post. I get traffic from like famous artists. Mm -hmm. I have a bunch of Russian watercolorists following me, which is insane. Aren't they amazing? They're great. They are amazing. I mean, it's like, they are. Oh, I'm looking at the painters them and I'm like, and the you're, way, you're way better than me. Why are you following me? And the Ukrainians? Oh my gosh. Because they, they, you know, a lot of yeah, them they're have, basically they're the same Russian. school. Yeah, they're basically, yeah. Oh, it's like unbelievable. So it's always crazy to get some random follower who's like this amazing painter. Yeah, it makes your day. It makes you feel like, okay, uh, yeah, that 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 was cool, but you know I think that's the thing about uh, social media and, and you know the days of MySpace is that before that you really almost had to have a blog or you had to have you had to well, have blogs some, were fun back then though yeah because people would tune in and read yeah. them and yeah. now you you don't I have a mailing list which I think helps drive traffic and does help. Supplement sales, you know. Um, oh, it actually helps. I I do believe it does. Okay. Uh, I had a sale just the other day from one of my, uh, one of my um, you know, I I do I do believe in the mailing list. I don't really know what to email everybody all the time, mm -hmm. but yeah, I do I do believe it, it. It's for those that want to partake in it. Yeah, and I think that I think there are some that do want that to partake in the um that's that uh you know because they, they don't want to do the social media and they don't mind the email and they can choose to read it on their own time you know hmm. but i i i kind of struggle as far as how, what do i say in this email that feels authentic and genuine versus like hey today or this week i did this you know i don't know i well, just i haven't found my voice with that well most people just do updates like that like oh I have this new painting or print or web or whatever because I have a few artists who somehow have ended up on their list mm -hmm. even though I'm on all their social media stuff yeah so I already know about all these prints and books but I guess there's somebody on their mailing list who does not right or when they do like a workshop or something, uh -huh. they'll post about that. Like, I'm going to be here. Right. I'm going to this convention. I'm going to be here. Come see me. I wish I had the, um, I wish I had the, uh, the ability to do or the demand to do those, those, uh, workshop you know travel I, I i mean i like doing workshops but so much work into it it's it's, it's it really is and it's tr for me it's stressful uh i enjoy them they're fun once you get them rolling but i think for me it's because i don't have that big of a following you know you're like you know running a workshop for me in, in some deserted island you know i thought it was a crazy idea but i said you know if, if if I get some people, then at least lets me know that there are some people out there, and I did get a few people. And I mean, it was it it was a little. It wasn't like super profitable. Well, it probably broke even, but I mean, just the same. It, it it I think it taught me that you know maybe my audience is bigger than I realized. Mm. You know. So what 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 uh we talked about uh jeffrey Catherine jones yes um and you know i i think we're both in agreement that you know had she lived longer man i really believe that she would have had a a a, a resurgence 
uh, who else who else uh, are that really um, floats uh, gets you going as far as when you see the work they really inspire you um, I'm trying to pick names here this is you got a bunch of books yeah I do but I'm trying to be more specific it's funny I mentioned Jeffrey Jones and I didn't even bring her book oh you didn't I, I do have her book I, I kind of brought books that you haven't seen mm -hmm. yet. That I thought you hadn't seen yet. I'll take a look at those for sure. Or books that I've really been looking at, like recently. Mm -hmm. Like um, I guess like James Jean. Yeah, James Jean. Classic. Uh, comic book cover artist. Mm -hmm. Turned fine artist. Yeah. Yeah, that seems to be a you know some of those. I think James Jeans is probably one of the uh, pivotal people that really made that jump successfully. You know, from comic book to to uh, to fine artist. I mean, even Kent Williams, he was a but, comic but, book artist too. Yeah, maybe it's I don't I don't I'm not fam I've only seen like a few comic books. I thought he was more of an illustrator. No, he. he he had done some graphic novels, I believe, um, for Marvel. Oh, yeah? He definitely did covers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that I remember seeing. He, he definitely did covers, and I think I saw one graphic novel. He did he one about a hunter that was really good. Um, but, yeah, he was definitely, like, a comic book guy. Now he's, like, full-time fine artist. Yeah. He made he's made the transition. I mean, from illustrator, if we were to generalize illustrator to fine artist, he's definitely made that jump. So, and even people like um, David Mack. Yeah, who's going really back seen, and forth? So, I haven't really seen that much from him, and he had the potential to really. He's still around. He's still doing stuff. Matter of fact, he's been working with. Um, Marvel Studios. Oh, so he's probably into a lot of the background, or I would you say the the art for the. Uh, I would say he's in the, even behind the, background, the scenes. Not even behind the scenes. He designed some of the um, scrolling images, like either before the film started or after. Some, oh, yeah? of the, some of the animation stuff you've Is he seen. doing title design? Is that what you mean? He's doing a bunch of rant. Well, there's like these silhouette fighting scenes and oh, everything. Okay. It's a lot of design work, but it's like his stuff. That's cool. So, so he's he... done a bunch of that. He's still like showing. He's still like... Yeah, because he has a loyal following. I mean, and rightfully so. And yeah, he's, he's one of those... He's been artists. around since the 90s, so... He was one of the first artists that I became aware of that... Uh, had, and by the time I had became aware of it, was he was just doing the Kabuki. Okay, so you and, know about Kabuki. Yeah, and and the early I remember seeing some of the early Kabuki work, you know, where it was just black and white. Yep, because he was technically self publishing. It was with a small company, but technically is yeah self publishing. Yeah, and I, I think I, it was like with Caliber, who's not even around anymore. Yeah. And then eventually Image picked up Kabuki and then he kind of just started doing work for Marvel. Yeah. A bunch of Daredevil and other random stuff. Yeah. And lately he's just been doing mostly cover work. Yeah. So. I got a text call to come in quietly. <laughs> Come in screaming. Yeah, don't come in screaming. But yeah, David Mack is the reason why I paint in watercolors. Yeah, he was really good at it. I mean, um, he is really good. I don't yeah, know, he, not, he not still good. he still does it. He does watercolors and like mixed media. Mm -hmm. So he's the reason why I paint in watercolors. Yeah, it's, it's, um, he was really, and I think, you know, he was really good because, but he was one of those artists that I think was like, um, 
Bill Sinkowitz. Yeah, I love Bill. Bill Sinkowitz, you know, as far as being able to really well, he's, mix mix yeah. photo yep. reference with yep. visual, you know, imagination. Yeah. Which you don't see a lot of artists do both well. And well, think, it's become more of a, a trend now, but Bill was definitely like one of the first light years ahead in, in mainstream industry because he was doing that back in like the eighties and seventies mm -hmm. for Marvel. Um, I have his uh, Electra and his Jimi Hendrix bio. So I always love Bill. Um, I think one of the first comic books I bought was because of one of his covers. Oh yeah, his covers. I, I loved his covers for um, New Mutants. I I think I remember that, but I, I didn't. He, I didn't collect X Men, so it's funny because he. Uh, when New Mutants started, he was doing the interior as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, for the film? No, no. This, this is like original comic book stuff. Oh, wow. Way back in the 80s. Then eventually he just started doing their covers. Mm -hmm. He wasn't doing interior work at all. But um, one of his covers caught my eye way back when, when I was younger. Showing my age. Yeah, I think we're we're old people. Well, <laughs> not that old, but yeah. Uh, it feels years. like our age is, I don't know, it just feels like, do you guys feel like our age is more relevant now than because of social media where we, we, uh, we the work stands out more for itself rather than who we are? Mm. Or no? Do you think, like, you know, because mm. we're older, you know, it's like we're still has been, we're, we're still doomed to be has -beens. Um think so i don't think we're doomed to be has-beens i don't feel that way i'm still trying to i mean if kent williams can do it you know and not that he was ever a has-been but i mean to still be relevant you know what i mean as far as you know and still... well, our age really isn't a factor i don't think it is it, it, i it used to be a, I age is not a factor at all i think for um, women especially age used to be a factor because you you know are the I think the art industry was really just, you know, because you still had a lot of industry people who got to pick and choose. And so, I mean, you never really saw. But now there's different markets because, yes. I know, like in the new contemporary market, if you're a female painter, mm -hmm. you stand out. Yeah. You, you make money. So... I think it's kind of started to swing the opposite direction um, in certain markets. Mm -hmm. But if you go like fine art, fine arts, they still have an issue with female painters. I do. One thing that I wanted to, I, I wanted to make sure I touch base on it because um, I was at a plein air event and for those that don't know plein air event is like these outdoor painting events and i was landscapes, asking painting landscapes not necessarily land landscapes a lot of you know there's some people yeah that do some figures. people but in the average the person doesn't know what plein air is yes so i have yeah. to explain it more than once you're right you're right and what really unnerved me and you know i think if i think what really bugged me was a really well, I, an artist that I respected, um, and she, damn, she really works hard at it, and especially in the plain air circuit. Mm -hmm. And you had this elderly gentleman just said, "Well, you're not an artist. You're not a real artist because you're not a. You're just a woman." He was just, you know, I can't remember Somebody the comment. Said that. <laughs> yes, it blew my mind. I mean, my jaw was on the ground, and I was like, "What?" And it, we, you know. I don't know if this guy had been drinking or whatnot, but it just, I think she had, I mean, even she was taken aback by it, but I mean, it's just, it, it goes more, it goes to that, it's still prevalent that, you know, there, I think there's a lot of women that don't get their just dues. Oh, you're checking out that, that yeah, see, I think that's a better, more natural pose than the, the other one, but it just took you to settle in. A little bit. All right, you gotta look at me a little bit here. There okay. we go. Yeah. 
yeah, I think, I think, yeah, it just had to settle in just a little bit. So, I'm really enjoying this as far as us talking and painting because then I don't even, I'm, I'm like, kind of like on, uh, what do you call, how would you say? Cruise control. Cruise control. <clears throat> do you find like when you're, you're painting and you're talking sometimes and you're, you're really engaged, having an engaging discussion, you, you go on this, uh, cruise control and you're not really. No, because I'm painting watercolors. Um, if I was doing oils, maybe I could pull it off. But usually when I'm doing demos and we start having real conversations, it just slows me down. It does? Yes. Oh, wow. I think because I did caricature art for Bush Gardens that I had, I mean, and you know, right out of high school, it broke me of that. Yeah, but you can speed draw and stuff. Watercolors, you gotta be kind of precise sometimes. I'd imagine you, you do because there's not like, oops, I can just cover that up. You can't. I mean, if you don't go super dark, a little bit. Yeah. But at the same time, you have to let stuff dry, which mm -hmm. during demos, I don't have the time to let stuff dry. So usually I'm speed painting. I explain to them, this is not how I really paint. Mm -hmm. This is a speed painting. And I have my um, image on an easel. When I'm at home, I paint flat. Mm -hmm. But the easel is there for people to actually see what I'm doing. Yeah. So since I paint kind of dry with watercolors, I can kind of paint with an easel and it not being a problem. Yeah. Oh, we, we need to talk about one artist that you haven't mentioned. I'm surprised you haven't mentioned. And uh, No, there's so many. So which Nick one? Frunge. Or Nick Rungi. Rungi, yeah, sorry, I totally murdered his name. No, I, sometimes I'm like, yeah, how do you pronounce these people's names? Because you never hear them. Right. But so, I think I've heard a podcast, and it was actually Rungi. Okay. I should, uh, think we'll I'm go by that. Correct. So, Nick, R-U-N-G-E, mm -hmm. that person. No, it's funny, because he's an oil painter, but the internet has basically embraced his watercolor work because there's something there. Yeah, there's definitely something there. There's something really strong. Strong composition. Um, composition, color. I keep telling people he kind of paints like he's using oils, but it's weird when you do that same technique with watercolors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he's a very strong oil painter, but yeah, his watercolor pieces have a lot of personality. Yeah, I, I, I they do. They, they, they're incredible. Um, and I think, I think uh, I'm probably gonna step, put my foot in the can of worms here. I think a lot of um, watercolor artists that you know are good draftsmen uh, don't get the. Um, they have to overcome skeptics, if you say, because the the um, watercolor uh, is rife with uh, uh, projection, photo projection, and, and paint by numbers. Eh. I would, I mean, it depends on where you're at, but I mean, if we're talking about the art world, mm -hmm. you know, as far as like gallery art, it's definitely rife with. Projection. I think that's just about any kind of painting at this point. Uh, well, yeah. it's not is e well, it's not easy to do that. I mean, it still can be done, but I mean, uh. I mean, it still can be done, but I mean, I don't think you see a lot of art oil colors. We're, we're, we're not going to talk bad about people. Oh, I know. No, not particular people. <laughs> no. But I would just say, it's, and the reason I bring this up is because I think. I think people, when they see that he's doing watercolors, I, don't, I think some people are quick to dismiss it. Well, it's probably just traced, and it's not. And he doesn't no, really do a lot of marks. And I think that's kind of where I'm going with this, is that, mm. you know, he's really an incredible draftsman. All right, so we were we were uh, talking about Nick Vrunge and... Rungi, Rungi. I believe. Yeah, sorry, Nick Rungi. And what a great draftsman he okay. was, or is, I should say. Yes, is. He's is. a young guy, or 
our, about our age, probably, or a little younger. Yeah, somewhere around there. And uh, we were then we were, were going to transition over to um, Nicholas Uribe. So you follow that guy? Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's incredible. He had a good podcast on uh, oh, yeah. uh, Savvy Painter. Okay. Yeah. That was a, a, I think a, he's still doing blogs as well. Really? Yeah, I, I yeah. think there's some artist blogs he pops up on here and there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he uh, he's he's really good. I, I like now he burned his original sketchbook after he got it all printed and proofed, right? Um Am I right? Well, he didn't like the way it was printed. I thought he br- Am I am I wrong or did he really burn the original painted sketchbook? No, I don't. Oh, the original painted sketchbook. Yeah, didn't he burn I, that? I thought he did. I don't know. I could be wrong. You might be wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but I seem to remember where he was like, "I'm gonna." Maybe I'm confusing with another artist. But I mean, there's some other artists who have done that. Yeah, but I don't remember him doing that. I I want to say. I want to say we can fact check somebody Google. This is why I need to have Cole uh, uh, with us next time. Yeah, producer. Do, yeah, <laughs> be that that you need guy. The producer on the to fact ch- fact check. Yeah, the L- fact check. Look check-us. up how to pronounce the last names. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, he's he's great. Um, I funded his Indiegogo. And that's that's another thing of you know being successful outside of the galleries, which is really, I think, for me, uh, hopeful. Because you I know, I think now that's the only way you succeed. I know, I know. There's not too many people like just making money. There's and some. making out a life from gallery work anymore. There's some. Yeah, there's some, but, but there, that, like, that's like plain air and landscapes and. Yeah, I mean... That's not going to be a typical thing for the next batch of artists. I don't think so. I think you're right. I think... I think That and the fact that a lot of these galleries don't know how to do social media. They don't know how to they promote. Don't. They're they don't. stuck. There's some that do. There's some that do, but there's a lot of galleries out there they that don't. don't. Yeah, they they're don't. They're run by older people and they're just stuck in their ways. I think it's just because, you know, I, I don't, I wouldn't say it's stuck on their ways, but running a business is not hard. It's, it's not an easy thing to do. And I think it's kind of, how do you say, uh, it's, you know, they. No, if, I've met people who just don't want to change. That's probably They don't a want factor. to adapt. That's probably that's a, a factor. better word. Yeah. It's probably a factor to some degree. Because I could call people out, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah, we're 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 gonna, we're gonna keep this positive. So even though I did kind of slam uh, some watercolor artists, but it is, I mean, you know, and I'm just gonna say this real quick. There are just some watercolor artists that don't do any drawings. They they just project a photo on there and they color it, and it's so obvious. Well, those are the ones that do all that tight, really tight, tight work, uh, which it is not. I don't every like. Art- I really don't follow those artists per se. No. And I mean, and then I would just say is that, how would you say, there's a lot of watercolor artists that do, that are great, incredible draftsmen. And I think that's why I get disheartened when I, when I see one that is obvious that they are, uh, trace, they're tracing basically. And it's, it's a pet pee for me, I think, you know, I don't know. I just, cause when you don't do your own drawing, you don't do your dress, you're, you're leaving out part of your, your soul, you know, and, and, and you're, you're, you're holding back. That's my personal view. I feel like those imperfections are, make you and your work who you are. I mean, if, if we'll, we'll go ahead and say it, you know, uh, Rockwell. Great composition, used the autograph later in his career. Um, but when you compare it to his earlier stuff, man, you know, I mean, you could really feel character in those drawings. Am I wrong? Well, I'll give him a pass because his workload 
Yes, I, and that's why he went to the autograph, though. I mean, here's here's a guy who the he, workload demanded. He was he, a rock star. He was his, his age, so his workload he couldn't keep up. Yeah, and I think because of that, you know, I think it kind of in some of my illustration classes we had assignments where we had to we had to uh, trace. And do the art projection. And it burned me to do that. It really... I don't know why I'm such a stickler about it, but I am. I just... No, I'm, I'm the same. It bugs me. Um, it, it does. It really bugs me. And I'm not trying to call anybody out. I'm not going to name any names or anything like that. But I mean, when I see something that's obviously, you know, projected, it... I, I, I'm not mad. I just feel like, oh, there's just a wasted opportunity to really reveal... Your art, your essence as a painter, you're holding back. No, it's worse when it's like somebody's whole career. Yeah, and you realize everything was just a projection. Yes, yes. There's uh, there was like no growth. They just gave up from the beginning. There's no reason reason for it. Yeah, sadly. It's it it is. All right, that was a Debbie Downer. Let's uh, move on to. Uh, I was going to talk, you got, you got talk about Nicholas some more, but yeah, let's talk about Nicholas some more. So, well, we were kind of under the impression. I'm under the impression that he burned these. He burned these. Oh, um, uh, we we books. haven't. We don't have a producer to fact check. We don't have a fact check. Um, so, I don't. Actually, I don't understand. Uh, I mean, I kind of, kind of like. I think it's kind of. I don't know the... I remember reading something of why he did it. Or at least there was an artist who did it. And I, there's a why he did it. And I just... I don't know. Uh, it's just... Um, I kind of get it. I kind of don't. I bet for various reasons. He said sketchbooks? Yeah, or that sketch... Books? There was a sketchbook. He, I think he did on Indiegogo. And I think he burned the original. Oh, you know what... You're mixing that up with this one guy who had a Kickstarter and he burnt the books before even... He mailed out some, then he burnt the rest. There was a guy who did that. Who was it? Um, I can't remember his name, but he was like... He was more of a cartoonist over a painter. No, 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 no. This one's had paintings in it. I feel like Um, I could be wrong... I don't want to be wrong. I mean, I want to be wrong. We're having a long I, conversation about. <laughs> I don't want to be. I want to be wrong because I don't. I think that, you know, that the books that Nicholas Uribe has done should be intact. You know, I think you're wrong. I, I hope I'm wrong. I think you're wrong. I'm. I'm googling. I, I, I have a bad feeling. I'm, I'm on right. Google right now and I can't find anything about it. But I think you're wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Because I mean the. Those sketchbooks that he's done are incredible. But he's published all those sketchbooks too. So yeah, I don't know why he would burn them. I think to make more value of the sketchbooks? No, because he's not trying to make money off the sketchbooks per se. Uh, I mean, he's trying to make money, but he's not like, I must make money. I must make money. No, because the Indiegogo I funded, originally it was going to be... Well, it took, I think it took over a year for us to even say we were going to get the books. Mm-hmm. Then when that year went by, the books, well, he didn't like the first batch of books, so he went with another option. Then those books got published and they got stuck in customs. How they get stuck in customs? He's like in South America. So oh yeah, he's in Colombia. Um, yeah, he's like, I think he's in Bogota or someplace. Yeah. So, there's a lot of corruption, you know. So, they got stuck in customs to the point where he was he was like, I don't know when you're going to get this book. Or these books, because I got two for basically the price of one. Um, one was an old book that he just added some new stuff to. Mm-hmm. And one was a new book. So he ended up sending everybody a link 
for the PDF of the book, like the printer's PDF, uh-huh. like high resolution images from the book. And he told us, share it, print it out. I don't care. I'm sorry. So at one point, I was like, I don't know if I'm getting this book. Yeah, that's that's gonna be com- incredibly stressful for the artist. To you know, you've you've gotten all these people to, you know, join in on this venture. Yeah, and, you need a lot and of then it was a, it was a big Indiegogo. No, yeah. but um, eventually it been a while. Um, I was on Instagram, and a, another artist I followed posted a story and the books were in his story and I'm like he received his books so I should be getting my books real soon too Mm. like a week later I got my books oh man I felt great yeah I bet you did and they're really really beautiful books he he put some money into the books yeah I mean if you're gonna ask people for money you, you can't you can't half-ass it. You've really got to I mean, like, the deliver. material of the books, everything, is really, really nice. But, um, he's good. Yeah. He's good. Um, so any, any, um, artists that you're in, other artists that you're into that... There's one artist, I believe she worked for... Either Pixar or Disney. Yeah. And she was like doing side stuff and posting on Instagram. And it got to the point where she became so popular, she quit her animation job. Oh, that's got to be the dream. <laughs> she quit her animation job to like do, you know, fine art, new contemporary based art. Uh huh. Um, I can't even pronounce her name because she is probably Ukrainian or something. Uh, I wish I had some of my Ukrainian friends over there. They probably um, could help us out with that. So. Eliza Ivanora. Nova. Mm. Ivanova. Maybe. Ivanova? Maybe. Yeah. Okay, I'll take the blame for murdering her name. Yeah, I'm I not going to try to murder her name. So. I, I, just, I, <laughs> I showed it to did. Doug. I probably did, so I apologize. But while you're back there, so this is from oh, my sketchbook. Goodness, hey, can you hold that? Well, no, let's not, because YouTube may get us for copyright for some reason. For some <laughs> reason. So we're just going to talk about it. We'll talk about it. Y'all yeah. can Google. You can Google it. So yeah. I will spell her name out for you. Yeah, please spell out her name. First name, E-L-I-Z-A. Last name, I-V-A-N-O-V-A. But I funded her sketchbook Mm -hmm. through Kickstarter. And she messed me up because I was trying to cut myself off. And she's working on another sketchbook. Oh, you you mean she's putting out a new yeah. one, and yep. it's like yep. you're a dick. Your your collection. You're, oh, I, oh, you're I'm a, a collector. I'm a collector. I'm a collector. Yeah. But I was trying to slow down because I just funded another book. And that's my friends why I don't do record collections. Well, I can't do records because my book collection is is bad. Yeah. And unfortunately, I still buy films. You do you mean films? DVDs. Well, actually, I'm I've switched to Blu-rays, but I'm still buying physical Why copies of. Why are you buying films? Because when I work, I like to put a film on background. Oh yeah. And okay. I don't pay for a lot of services. I I pay for Netflix, but you know Netflix is very basic. Mm-hmm. It's good for TV shows, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not gonna pay for Hulu and all this other stuff. Yeah, I can't do Hulu or any of that. I so I like... still pay for films. Mm-hmm. And luckily enough, a lot of people don't buy films anymore. So films aren't as expensive as they used to be. Yeah. So you I, have, know, I have this movie of... collection, then I have this book collection. And like when I, every time I move, those are all my boxes. Easily. Mm. That and like random art stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I couldn't do records. Um, that and I like to skip songs anyways. I'm sorry. Everybody's record isn't, like, 
great from Those Psalm, days are one, Psalm over. 1 to 14, or nowadays they can do like 1 to 22. Those days are kind of like over. I mean, I love concept albums, but I don't feel like there are some artists that still do that, but I don't feel like there's a lot of them that, that are going out to, you know, actively try and get, you know, a concept album, you know? Well, not even concept, just having like every track really be really good. Be really good. Yeah. That and a lot of people do skits and I'm like, I don't want to listen to a skit. Maybe once. What do you, what do you, I'm sorry. Uh, what do you mean by skit? I'm a little out of that. Oh, see, that's mostly with like R&B or rap albums. Yeah. Usually like, alternative indie albums don't have skits. I'm a little out on that. Um, but skits have been around like for that stuff since the 90s. That's basically when they became a big thing. Mm. Like um, I'm talking about rap now. This yeah. might turn some people off, but people like Wu Tang, they had skits on their albums, and some other big groups and names had skits. And people nowadays still do skits. So, it skits is like the, it's a song, but there's a, a story to the song? Sometimes it's not a song. Sometimes it's them no, no talking or acting out some scene. It's like the most random stuff. Gotcha. It could be a song. It could be somebody just talking. Mm -hmm. But after you listen to a skit once, you're like, okay, I'm done. I don't need to listen to the same skit over and over again. Oh, it's like there. There's some people that are a huge fan of, I guess, like musicals, and they have they will play them over and over and over. That's a no for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's I, I can't I don't know, but I mean I I guess it depends on if you know you it's a passion thing I guess. So, so we've talked about uh, four artists now. Is there any other artists that that you want to mention that that really you know get you going? I'm trying to think here. I should just open up my Instagram. Because it's basically artists. Um, who have we not talked about? Hmm. Well, um, How about you? Oh, uh, I would say... Well, I really have been going over... Um, there's two artists that I, I really enjoyed their work and I've kind of been revisiting one and kind of keeping up with another and I think they're supposed to be coming out with a a book soon and okay. uh, I better I better I'll just say Paul Pope first and uh, it's funny so not to cut you, all, cut you off Paul Pope did release an art book it's weird there's a lot of text a lot of text. Oh, really? Yeah, I'll have to show it to you because I'm bored. Um, I want to see more art than the text, but I need to just sit down and read the text and see what it's all about. Gotcha. And I have... But the only reason I bought it, it was on my wish list for a while on Amazon, and then it went down in price some. I'm like, I need to buy it now. Mm, yeah, when when you see price, it's like uh, Sebastian Kruger. I saw a hardback book by Sebastian Kruger, and it was twelve dollars. Twelve dollars. I was like, done. I don't, you don't, you know. There's no need to twist my arm on that. I, I'm getting it. It's uh, it was yeah. It was like stupid cheap. It was used, but still. I mean, doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. You know. Um, Scoop it up. Yeah. And now I have forgotten the other artist. So, so, did you say Paul Pope's coming out with another book? Or, no, there's other artists. Or, or it's I, the same book it's, I'm discussing. Yeah, no, I'm talking about another artist, and I have already forgotten his name again. Um, and it doesn't help that I haven't had much sleep lately, so I will, I will, uh, we will park him for later. Uh, and 
I'll probably probably want to talk about his work in a little bit more in depth anyways because he I hate that um and it's I think it's because when I see his for some reason it, it, rem it clicks over to another name and okay that of uh, somebody that I know and so that's it's just a it, it's too close of association a name that it causes me to mind block Um, as far as other artists go that really like, you know, um, oh, there's so many of them. Yeah. Um, I would to say. To the point where you like forget. Yeah. I don't want to say I forget, but I just, uh, it's just like, um, I don't know. Um, I would say is that, all right. I, I, so since we're talking about Ukrainian artists, uh, and, um, I would say that, uh, there's a, there's a lot of good Ukrainian artists. Um, but, uh. One of the ones that is, um, and I'm brain farting on that one too. <laughs> Welcome to the inaugural video podcast and where I forget all the artist's name. I have to get a YouTube or something. I just literally, it, it, it's, I usually don't have this problem of remembering, but. Well, while you're figuring that out. Yeah. I just funded James Martin's book. Oh yeah? Have you seen this guy's work? No, who's James? Tell me a little He's bit. He's a more. figurative artist, kind of slash pinupy. Oh, cool. Um, his work's really, really popular. Um, he just made a lot of money on Kickstarter. Um, but yeah, that just got funded today. Three hundred and fifty pages in this book. Wow, that's a lot. But he produces a lot of work. But you can't, you know, 350 pages can't be garbage, though. You've got to... No, he, he's... It he, has to be good. Yeah, stuff. It's, it's good. It's good to the point where he made a lot of money. Um, that's good. I think that's cool. I mean, it's like when we talk about in the grand scheme of things of these artists putting out books. Yeah, I'm just going to have to keep painting because I can't... I, I, know, I know it'll... It'll, it'll, it'll come back to you. It'll come back to me in the weirdest way. And then I'll scream it out randomly. But... Uh, that's the thing I think is it was out with social media. I would have never found some of these artists because of you know the social media, yeah, and it gives access to you know for us to discover them and them to be discovered by these bigger you know um company uh bigger audiences. Um, I'll say that you know, I mean, I could go through my usual list, I guess I'll probably do that. Um so one of my, my, my favorite artists, especially with his earlier work, is William Ray. Um, I totally dig his. I mean, that's... I know you do. I, I think that's one of the reasons I got into, you know, doing... You're the reason Air. why I follow him. Yeah. I, I saw you following him, and I'm like, oh, who's this guy? And he always posts interesting artists as well. Yes, he does. I mean, and... and I would have to say there's a lot of artists I follow today because he does that. Same. And, he, you know, he's he's very good about sharing that. <clears throat> and um, then uh, William Ray is one. And this one uh, is... Uh, there's a few others that probably aren't as well-known, but they, they should be. Um, and... Oh, I'm like, I think it's because of the sleep deprivation. I still haven't caught up with it that I'm just like blanking out. But you know, I'm not gonna kick myself because I am trying to do a painting, talk yeah. to you, and then recall on a demand. So. so real quick, I'll show you James Martin. Dang, that is pretty. That's pretty badass. Oh, he's he's good. That is pretty badass. He is good because I was like, I'm not. Funding any more books. I'm cut off. I'm saving you're money. Like, no, I've got to get it. And this one, I was like, uh, I can't help myself. Can't help myself. Yeah. I mean, that one I couldn't pass. And how much was that book? Um, it was a lot of money. Was it a hundred dollars? Two hundred? Well, actually, I got the one with the slip case, so it's a hundred. That's not too bad, really. No, it's not too bad for how many pages? No. no. In, in the grand scheme of things, it's not, no. it's not that bad. No, but in terms of 
saving money. Yes. In terms of saving money, yes, it yes. is. It is like, but uh, book wise, no, <laughs> especially with an art book. Yes, with an art book. I mean, because you know, there's a lot of love and, and 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 thought that goes in there. And then the crazy stuff with art books, they don't keep printing these things. No. So I have books in my collection that are actually worth money because they're just out of print or they were just Kickstarter books. Right. You know, I mean, and I think that's a good thing for the artist to know that, you know, the, the effort that they put into these books, you know, there are, there is a passionate, um, there is a passionate uh, audience that is, that will spend the money. You know, this isn't like a comic book. Where, you know, if you're going to sell a comic book and you've got to wait umpteen, you know, decades for it to become valuable. But I guess, you know, the thing is, is that, is that beneficial for the artist then to hoard some of these books and then release them? You know, I don't know. What's your thought on that? I don't know. I just know that I need to tell my family, if I die, just don't take them straight to the thrift store thrift store because some of these books are worth real money yeah don't toss them away i have no. to do that with my art collection too um i need to catalog all the stuff i own from other artists because i own original work oh yeah you don't and yeah. there's some artists i'm like don't just take that to a thrift store, even if you don't like nudes or this or that. Yeah. I have one piece from a Japanese artist that I won back when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And I could easily sell it for a lot of money, but I just refused to sell it. I don't blame you. I mean, who wants to sell something that, you know, that's their, you know, they're very, you know, it, it it's you know there's some books that I won't sell I mean it's like a, I don't think it's worth a lot of money but I don't it's just maybe it's because I mean it's it's worth a lot to me uh, would be uh, Drew, uh, not, um, Bill Bill Sinkowitz okay or Singovich maybe mm -hmm. I'm pronouncing that one wrong too sorry Bill <laughs> um, yeah everybody does it wrong I know. I don't know which way to spell it um, or pronounce it. But that Jimi Hendrix one, oh yeah. my gosh, because I'm such a huge Hendrix fan. Yep. And I just, I just couldn't. I just can't. I just can't. You know, no. I mean, I don't look at it all the time. But there are times where I'll pull it out and I'll look yeah. at it and I'm just. It still blows me away of how good and how forward thinking, you know, his work and and did what he did with him comics on uh, Facebook. Uh. I don't know if he was on Facebook. He is. He is. I, I may. It may be. It may be. Uh, you know how fa this is yeah. that algorithm thing yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't probably post a lot. Actually, he posts more than some people because um, usually when I don't see any of his work, I see time. all. I see all his stuff. That's why I was asking you. Yeah. Um, usually, when somebody famous dies, who he really likes, he'll like do a portrait piece of him. Oh yeah. And wow. they're like amazing. Gosh. Every single one. Man. So I, you, you should look look them up. Um, I know I was following them. I just, I'm telling you this, the algorithm. The, the Facebook, yeah. It that happens. stupid Facebook, Zucker turd, uh, uh, you're, you're you talking know, bad about wants to, to <laughs> I will make an exception for him. You know? oh. I will make an exception for Zucker turd. Uh, yes, I said it. And, you know, because I'm on YouTube and, you know, they're not going to demonetize me, I hope. <laughs> Or any of this, um, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 there. There's a there's a lot of artists that um, I follow, and then suddenly, yeah. you know, yeah, it's hard to keep up. You follow so many, it's hard to keep up yep. with some of them. You, I think you forget about people until you realize, hey, I haven't seen their stuff in years. Yeah, there's a French artist. Uh, his, I believe his name is Jose Vicente, and he does these really beautiful impressionist landscape. Uh, landscape plein airs and Facebook decided to, that I didn't need to keep updated with them and if it wasn't for I was dropping off my daughter and I thought man this would be this is we passed a, a pasture and I was like this would totally be a, like a Jose Vicente painting and then I was like hey how come I haven't seen anything I hope he's alright 
He was fine. He'd been painting, and then I realized <laughs> I'd missed out on all these paintings he'd posted because Facebook deemed that I I don't need to follow him anymore, you know. And I think that's what gets my goat is is that we're there's an algorithm that decides who you should who you need to keep following, and and who you don't. And I think that's what burns me. That's what burns me as far as well, like uh, we said earlier. Um, they try to make you sponsor all your content. Yeah, and that, that's how you're supposed to reach people. Sponsor all your content. Pay us money. Mm -hmm. Pay us money, and uh, and everybody will see it, or more people. Yes, you'll reach Not more everybody, people. More people. Yeah. Um, and I don't necessarily know that a lot of artists uh, have found when they do pay for that that. They've gotten something out of it, you know that the re, the the. Honestly, I don't think you need to. But I don't think that uh, some of them. I don't think they're really getting a reward out of the, the the money that they're putting into it. I've heard some say that you know the minute they turned, you know, like an Instagram to a business account, the likes and and the, the traffic they got just went. Oh really? <clears throat> yeah, went down. And you know, and they were pretty. And this wasn't like one or two people that claimed this. It was like, you know, about, I'd, I'd say darn near 10 people that really, you know, said the minute they monetized, or I would say went to a business account, that's when they noticed uh, it, 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 it just died on them, you know, their traffic and their reach, which I don't know. I mean, it's like, I feel like in some ways we're being like kind of, um, we're, we're, we're following into this whole hamster wheel of trying to reach people by likes and whatnot. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's just part of me. I, I felt like at some point, you know, going the way of, you know, Jeremy Mann and just like say, screw social media. Let me just hand it over to the galleries and let them handle my social media. But he and makes I'll just, so much money. He can do that. Yeah, that's a different. But he decided scenario. He, but he did, you know, he's the one who, you know, really. I said, you know, okay, maybe I do need to revisit a mailing list. And he's got a like, mailing list. Everything he does, pretty much sells. Great for him, and, so, and great for he that he doesn't have to, you know, do the whole social media thing. Yeah, that's good for him. Um, you know, because I I do believe that. It, did you watch his documentary? Oh yeah, I have it. Okay. Yeah, the uh, the it was kind of short. Yeah, it was a. Uh, you're talking about the um the one um where he he, he um what he was at his house and yeah he hires a model goes and picks yeah. up and then yes. you know talks about yeah. yeah solitude solitary man yes yeah that was good I like that I didn't I believe that him and the filmmaker went to school together okay and I think that's how that came about um but good film I like I like the approach to it. Different, different's good. But oh. I guess it speaks to kind of what I, why I'm doing this okay. uh, for everybody's tuned in. It's just like I find these painting tutorials boring. I mean, even I look at mine and I just like they're boring for me. But when you and I have this conversation, it's not. You know, okay. it's it's much more engaging. Um. And I feel like, you know, the people that are watching me paint this and then, you know, um, you know, I feel like, you know, they'll probably have a better connection to, you know, the person in the painting. You know, like when you see, let's say we're talking about drawing, you know, when you see a portrait, it's like, okay, here's this person. Who are they? Do, do I, why do I care about this person? You know, what, what, what really is driving me to look at this portrait? You know, more so than, you know, average. Whereas if you were to see the video of this process and hear them talk, then, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, I feel that, you know, they're going to, people are going to walk away knowing you a little bit more about you than they would have if just looking at your portrait. Hmm. I mean, do you think I'm wrong? Sounds about right. 
Yeah, I mean, and my hope is, is that, you know, I get more people. So if you, all right, let's, here, here's a question I knew I, I was going to ask, and I'm, I'm glad I remembered. If you could steal and get away with stealing a painting, anyone's painting, should, whose painting you would you steal? For this. Who's, you could only steal one painting. Um. Who would you steal? Now, we're, we're going to fully disclaimer that... We are by in no means. We're not planning to steal a painting. We are not <laughs> planning to steal a painting, but we're just saying if we can, we or if you won the lottery, you know, if you won the lottery and you could buy one painting, oh. whose painting would you buy? Or that's and, hard. Or steal. <laughs> who's yours? Do you know? Oh yeah, I I know right. I, oh okay. I, I know ahead. right off the bat. I would steal. And he recently donated it to, uh, not donated, I think he, uh, an L.A. Uh, mu um, museum bought it. What? William Ray, he has this one painting, and oh my gosh, it is, it is, um, it is uh, a painting where it's this, like, it's, it's urban, and I don't know the name of it, and this is why we need, we need, a producer. We need Cole to be the producer on that one. Um, when I t he told him he'd be down for it, but uh, for this one, I think because he came late to the game and we don't have time to set him up. Yeah. But uh, we'll we'll try to do that next time. But uh, but in short, it's a um, painting of a plane landing. There's a billboard, and I believe uh, there's train tracks and there's a ca cars going by. Okay. So it's like this planes, trains, and automobile thing, but it's like this sunset, this typical, you know, brightly lit late day sun, sun at sunny afternoon, but it's like this urban scene, and it is just it just speaks to me, and and you know having been to, you know, Southern California, I mean, is it, it epitomizes to me my experiences of, of when I visited, you know, Southern California and I see that and I was like, Oh, this is it. This is, and it's, a, I believe it's a big painting too. Okay. So yeah, that would be the one. That would oh, be no. the one. See, my idea would change from day to day. But um, today, right now, right here. Um, Oh, you know what's funny? So, right now, there is a, a painting by one of our friends. Mm -hmm. um, there's a painting by Mark Miltz. I think it's probably my favorite painting that he's done. Of he's his, done a lot of great paintings. Yeah, he's done a lot of great paintings. But there's this one painting that's really, really strong. Of his youngest daughter in the kimono. Oh, that was... And that one has won a lot of awards, too. Hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. But he doesn't own that painting anymore. He gave it to his daughter. The Sammy, right? Yeah, Sammy. Sammy. The Sammy yeah. painting. Oh, maybe we shouldn't have said Sammy, but anyways. No, we, we can say it because I think it's the basis of the painting. Okay, yeah. So, we're, we're fine. And it might be named that anyways. I can't remember. Um, But... Let me see what the actual name is so okay. people can look it up. Yeah. It, but it's a very strong painting. Matter of fact, I traded artwork for a print of it. And he actually got a canvas print made back when we had Richmond Camera. Oh, yeah. And they would make some awesome prints for you. Yes, they would. Yeah, they, they so did great So I was like, work. hey, Mark, go here and make a print for me, and I'll give you this piece. Well, I think I got the better end of the trade. I'm sorry, Mark. <laughs> but that painting is like one of my favorite paintings. And I would take it from Sammy. I'm sorry, Sammy. I'm taking your painting. <laughs> so that would be the one today, right now. Today, right now. Right now, off, right out, here. Off the top of my head. Yeah. That one. Because I think about it a lot, and it's hanging in my apartment. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I see it all the time. At least the print is mm -hmm. hanging. And I want to look at the name. Hopefully it's on his Instagram. Let's see. No, it's not. I need to talk to him about his Instagram. 
You know, Mark is one of those that... No, that, he's not. He's not he's really not. into... He's, I mean, he barely keeps his website going. Which I can't say too much. My website's a shell. Yeah, it's it's not... It's, it's you know, how do you say? When you get to... When, when, when people aren't really going there, it makes you it You lose hard, interest. It makes it hard for you to put interest. But, yeah. you know, having that... I just sold a painting another, the other day directly from that. and Really? Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it's not a lot of money, but I mean, the thing is, is that's why I, I have that is so that, you know, I have paintings of different price ranges so that, you know, you can, maybe you can afford a lot of, you know, to. But like you say, you're doing the newsletter, you're, you're pretty active, so. I wasn't always active. And I have to tell you, this last, uh, this last fall was not easy to say the least. I mean, it's like I pretty much let everything die, it felt like. So yeah, it, it it does take. It's like social media; it takes its toll on you as far as trying to keep up with everything. Oh, talking about social media, so there's another guy I like. I don't know how to say his name. He goes by Bale, B A E L. Mm -hmm. He's in the UK. He does like figures and ink and watercolor. So he's on Instagram. And I funded his Kickstarter as well. So it's... Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. That's really great line work. You want to go ahead and tell everybody how to find him? Because we're not Instagram. showing book. But so, yeah. B-A-E-L. If you want to look up this book I'm talking about, it's called She. I don't know if you can still buy it. But he's on Instagram. Yeah, definitely check it out. But he's good. He's good. All right. Well, I think... I don't know whether to add your glasses or not. Oh, you didn't do the glasses? Do you want me to do the glasses? It's up to you. It's your painting. Yeah, but, you know, everybody's got to recognize Devon. So I think you always wear the glasses. So I kind of I kind of feel like I'm... I'm, I'm I kind of need to. Go so, put a mustache? Huh? I'm joking. No, I'm not going to put your Hitler stash. <laughs> it was no. Oh my god. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't a Hitler stash. No, I'm it just wasn't. Kidding. It was not. <laughs> it, it was short, but it wasn't. That I'm short. kidding. I'm kidding. No, I some kid. people used to call it that. Yeah. But I haven't had that mustache in like years. Yeah. And people still see photos, and they're like, "How did you have a mustache?" Oh come on! It's just not. It wasn't. Like well, yeah. No, there's some people that are, like people from the group bugged me about it for years oh, to really? the point where I'm like, okay, I'm shaving it off. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's about the main reason why I don't have a mustache because yeah. people bugged me so much. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's like I I get, I don't know. Um, I think sometimes you know you make a fashion statement and. You know, it, some people don't know. I don't know. Everybody, there's always some people, and I find it sometimes it's more, it, it, it's definitely women that will always make a comment about what they feel like you should, you know, oh, you should do this or you should do that, you know? Um, it was funny because my father, he was like, you shaved your mustache? <laughs> he liked shave? it. Yeah, he liked it. He liked it. Or yeah. he was like used to it. Or, he was know. used to it, yeah. Plus, usually he has a mustache. Gotcha. And we're pretty much the same person, except he's lighter. Oh, okay, so he's but, lighter but, in skin tone? Yeah, okay. but we basically look the same. Yeah. If you saw him, you'd be like, oh, yeah, that's his father. Yeah, that's, it's strange how that works out. But at the same time, I still look like my mom somehow. Yeah. It's really weird genetics. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's like there's some people you see a little bit of everybody in them. So, I yeah. mean, both parents in, at, at the same time. Yep. Um, I can't think of any instances right off the bat, but I mean, I definitely know what you mean by that. I'm kind of stopping because at this point, I'm not stopping, but I mean, I'm kind of like hesitant to talk because, you know, this is the one thing that I kind of can't screw up. I mean, it's oils. You can fix that. But I have a lot of work to do. I get scared. 
yeah, I think I think that's the hardest thing sometimes is to commit on on some of these um, paintings is, is when you're doing you've done the face and now you've got to do the coupe de gras and and do you know that the glasses or something like that where you could you could screw it up you could totally screw it up if you're not careful. Actually, I don't think he has any more copies of this book. Oh, he doesn't. He only made a hundred, and I have like thirty-three. You have thirty. That's a good number. Yeah, I think he was just selling these off his Instagram. I don't think this was a Kickstarter. He sold them directly off of yep. Instagram. Mm -hmm. Well, power to him. Yeah. So limited run. Bail. Any other artists that, uh, or anything in the art world lately that is uh, got your interest, good or bad? Um, we're trying to be positive. Uh, yeah, we're definitely not talking about local art right now. Well, I wasn't going to talk about local. You said good or bad, and something popped up in my head. Yeah, that was bad. Bad. Oops. Bad. Yeah. Don't talk about that. Yeah. Um. Actually, I think I can talk about this. Because it's really bad. Uh oh. Um, the banana taped to the wall. Oh yeah, we can definitely talk about that. We that can talk so about that one. Yeah, we can talk about that. That that's pretty bad. Uh, it, it it really it really gets me because I feel like it's wag the dog in in so many ways. It's not only wag the dog, but it's 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 uh, it's like we can get away with this. Watch us. We're gonna get away with it. So what? Somebody, I believe they paid maybe a hundred grand. Oh, I think I thought it was more, but I could be wrong. I know it was a lot of money. Um, yes, it was. So somebody bought it, at least a hundred grand. The funny part is, a, a artist, a performing artist, went and ate the banana. I thought he was the one who bought it. No, he ate the banana. Uh, I still think they're in on it. But they bought another banana and replaced it. And they said the person who bought it bought the concept. That's like the concept of the whole damn uh, shredder with Banksy. I like Banksy. Um, I don't. I know you don't. I don't. I just... Oh, but to go back to the banana real quick. Yeah, let's keep on the banana. Come to find out. I've seen somebody post this on Facebook, I guess. The banana with the tape has been done before. Like, I think in the 80s or 70s or something. So it's not even that original concept. Why am I not surprised about that? Yeah, I'm not surprised either. So it's not even that original concept that somebody paid all this money for. Boy, how do you feel about the buying that now? I mean, if you just bought that, how do you, how do you feel? First, like, I would not have bought that. Well, <laughs> I don't think either. Yeah, you would not be sitting in that chair if you bought that. No, I'm not that. Yeah. I'm going, to, I'm going to insult this person. I'm not that stupid. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, 120k. Oh, yeah, it was like yeah, near. Oh gosh, it's so crazy. Why? I don't. Back in December this. of 2019 in Miami. I don't. I don't understand this whole thing. It just is beyond me and my grasp of this whole. What you know. Yeah, I don't get it. I just don't get it. So. No, I don't know if I did a disservice to you or not. Oh, God. Yeah. Oops. All right. Yeah, I got to fix it. It's just that it, we're dealing with the sun, the glasses again. I just. Oh, you, you couldn't get the glasses right nah, I wanted to get a glare but I didn't want to get that wide of a glare that's always a problem you know when you're you can just... save it it's gonna take a week to dry there I, I just didn't want that much to... glare I don't know I just I think I screwed the page on this one we'll find out
There we go. Maybe that will work. We'll see. I don't know. You can you 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 you'll tell me. So I I that's what I like about you. You don't hold back. I think I think that's when uh you know when you find somebody that that will tell you the truth. Mhm. Mm even if it hurts. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, that's not your best piece. That's not your good best piece. That's, you know, but that's, 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 you know, people like that you have to have because, you know, when, and especially in this businesses, because if you have people that just tell you everything is great, you don't grow and you kind of get, you, 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 uh, you get a false sense of security that you're growing and you're not, you know? Yeah. And then I think that's a, that is a, um, that's a rude awakening if, if that ever happens, you know, when someone says, oh, that's not that good. And you're like, oh, what? Hold on a minute. You almost, yeah, it's, it's, I think we all know, or at least have experienced that when, you know, you, you've been in that circle and then suddenly, um, you know, you get your bubble burst a little bit. I know I have. Yeah. I definitely have had my bubble burst and it's, you need it though. You need it. And when somebody does it, you know, when somebody's, you know, truly telling you the truth and they're not doing it to be mean, they're just, you know, they're just trying to. Sometimes. I mean, I mean, you're always going to get people, you know, like, you know, at shows or something. I've had people tell me at certain, you know, at shows like they'll see a piece of mine, like, you know, I wouldn't pay two thousand dollars for that. And I'm like, well, that's most people. I get that too with my work. Well, like, I mean, the way they do it though, it's like you know, they sit there and they stare at it for a little bit, and you know, they're interested in it. That's the thing. But they, I don't know what, I don't know if it's just like this reverse psychology that they think that by insulting it or demeaning your work that you'll suddenly cave in and say, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll sell it for cheaper, you know, or I don't, I don't know what it is or if it's, it's that they're, you know, they can't afford it and they just want to demean it. I don't know. Does that make sense? Uh, I mean, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, I've had some people, I mean, but you know, I, I don't really worry about it. I don't let them affect me. But, you know, I mean, it's just one of those, you laugh, you got to laugh it off. Because if you don't, you know, you just gonna, it's going to affect your work. And you can't let people, you know, no matter what stage you are in your career, you cannot let the naysayers. But you need to have people who will tell you the truth. Yeah. You do need that. Because if you don't, you're going to, you're going to get uh, in trouble. Uh, who might that be? <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna. That's probably an a Amway people. So I'm not going to answer that. Also, real quick, that Mark Milts painting. Yeah. Um, it's called American Otaku. Yeah, that's right. So that's that's the one you would you would have the original well, that's, today. Mean, yes. Yeah, today. today. Which you can find on miltsfineart.com. And um, what's this Instagram page? It's not updated. We're talking about <laughs> that yeah, painting's that... not even up there. Oh, wow. Um, Come it's, on, Mark. Is Mark underscore Milts? Mm -hmm. And Milts is M I L T Z. Yeah. But no, it's not up there. Mm. It's on his um, website, though. Yeah. Um, in the portraits section yeah so but think, that's a really good painting yeah I think that's a hard thing for you know since we're talking about painting um, in general I think I'm almost done with this I've just got to figure out how to whitewash the background um, that didn't really sound positive but <laughs> the um, 
the artists that are savvy about promoting themselves are really in today's world does really well. Um, and then the artists that aren't and you know, man, and I think this goes down to, you know, like the older illustrators that, you know, were great, but you know, they just, they relied on the, um, publishers, galleries, art, art reps and everything, everything to do else. the work for them. And, and then suddenly it's, you know, now you are the rep. You are the your rep. own rep, which is a good and a bad thing. It is a good and a bad thing. And good a, thing you can keep all your money. Yeah. Bad thing you have to do extra work. And it's not even like twice the work. It's like four times the work. Yes. It's not. I mean, let's let's be honest. It is. It is without a doubt. It's you, a separate job. It is. Yeah. It's a job for two people. I mean, and you know for. People that have a, another another job, um, you know, a full time job for benefits and stuff, you know, this really kind of is it's tough because you know you only have you know what do you paint or do you spend five hours on social media trying to promote something you know yeah or or do your newsletter or do your video or your blog or your, edit your video. You know, I know, and it's like, and it's like, I have because do people are that. doing that because I want to do videos, but I'm like, I don't want to edit videos yeah. as well. Who has time? Well, um, I mean, or the money to pay someone else to do it. Well, most of the artists I know who do it do it themselves, yeah, they have to teach themselves. Well, basically, you'll probably be doing this too, yeah. I'm lucky they have enough to teach that I know how, how to do, do it. it. But yeah, you're right. They have to, it's another skill set they have to learn. It's another jack of all trades for sure. I don't know if I was really intending this to fill out all the way, but I did. I don't know. I thought I was going to kind of stop and let the white background show, but you know how that goes. But these are just sketches, so I'm not going to worry about it. It's not like, it's not like we can sell these things. I mean, you never know. Uh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah. don't. Don't sell yourself short. So, I'm um, just doing... Yeah, I don't know why I even want to do that. I think I think it was better with the white background. But, oh, well. Because my demo pieces, people want to buy left and right. Are you selling them? Um, um, you should. Some... Some are weird, so I, I think I'm starting to do shows again. Uh huh. And there are certain pieces like just they're too good to get rid of right now. Mm hmm. Like let them run their course, then I can sell them. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's it's. So. And then there are some pieces where I'll give a person a price. Actually, there are some pieces I don't know what to sell it for. Because I'm like, okay, um, it's a demo piece. Yeah, but it's, it's good. But so sometimes I just haven't sat down and figured out what to do. What what to do with those pieces? Because I was not expecting them to be sold mm -hmm. originally. But people have shown interest, so why not? Yeah, why not? Absolutely, it's, it's it's it just goes down to the age old of you know, hey, look, somebody's interested in it. Why not? Why not you? You know. So. No. Yeah, definitely. So. Any other artists that that you, um, Toby? Okay, okay. I know. I told you it was gonna come out, Toby. Um, Toby is this comic book artist, and I can't remember his last name. Oh, my goodness. Okay, what, what comic book? Because I'm a comic book person. Uh, Toby Cypress. Cyrus or Cypress? Toby Cypress. That is uh, when we were talking about Paul, Paul Pope. Mm -hmm. Toby Cypress has an... He's like Paul Pope in a way, but not. He's his own person. And okay. Man, to, to, yeah, great, great work. I, I, mean, I love his line work. He does digital too. I mean, he just like you know, he works also in, in all digital. I think, and he, he went. I believe he went to the Joe Kubert School of 
of um, comic book yeah, art. Comic school, yeah. So he's you know I mean he's he's got chops, but he's got this you know beautiful style that I really just dig, really dig, and I knew it was gonna come. I mean it's just like I just I had to be patient to wait for it. Don't you hate that? <laughs> It's like, ah, oh, I can't remember his name, and I feel stupid. But, yeah, and it's not, you won't want to, you know, it's not that they're forgettable by any means, but, you know, sometimes life and the daily grind and staying up late kind of gets to you after a point. Oh, I have a guy who I look at a lot. Um, his name's Juan Ruiz. Oh, yeah? Um, he, he does a lot of mixed media Pieces, oil. Um, I swear he does some watercolor mm -hmm. as well. But he's really, really good. Oh, yeah? And, of course, you can find him on Instagram. But let's see. Hold on. I'll show you a piece. So... <laughs> this is the fun thing is that I don't really there's no pressure to do anything good it's almost like I kind of like hey I, this, is, this isn't going to sell so let me just you know throw some stuff at it and see what happens oh yeah I I, I, I've, I know you've seen you've stumbled I across have. Oh, you, yeah, yeah. I yeah. probably have I just you know how I was like you can't remember everybody's name yeah there's name. so many so artists. many good people. Well, you know what I do with Instagram? When I start following an artist, I save one of their pieces mm -hmm. in my collection section on Instagram. Yeah. So I can like go back and it'll help me jog my memory about that artist. Yes, I've done that. I So I have a piece of everybody's work just about in that collection section. So I don't like forget, forget about them. Mm -hmm. Since, you know, it's kind of like Facebook where you don't see everybody. You're right. Yeah, you can't keep up with everybody. All but right. he, he's really good. He's really good. Um, I think I've made this worse for wear, but I don't, you know, it is what it is. So, but uh, we're, we're, we've hit two, we've hit um, almost two hours. So. Yeah, I think that might be a stopping point. Yeah, I think, I think it is at a stopping point. He does all this weird perspective shots oh wow that is good yeah I like he, that. he's good he's good would love to emulate that with my watercolors somehow yeah because i'm trying to do more than just portraits yeah um yeah. because i don't know like that's a favorite oh yeah that's good too yeah it's nice to have models that will you know a, a good set of models too all right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead. I guess we'll do this as a reveal and keep it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'll just turn this around. I hope I can turn this around. I'll just turn it around and, and see um, what you think of it. And, uh, or I'll just take it off. I was about to say, it's going to drop on the floor. It's going to drop <laughs> on the floor. What, you mean if I turn it? Maybe not. I don't know. Are you, have you this, scared? I'm scared. I'm scared because you have this white carpet. Yeah, well. <laughs> or cream. Well, there you go. How about that? That's not too bad. Not too bad. See, that's an honest friend. Yeah, it's just not your best, but you know. No, for like, what, two hours of painting? Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's, that's not bad. Yeah, that's less than what you do for painting night. Yeah, you get three. And I'm running my mouth the whole time. And you're talking. Yeah. No, that's, that's not bad at all. Yeah, so. That's, that's, that's two hours of painting. Yeah. That, that's impressive, actually. So, that's. Yeah, don't. it's, it's, uh. What? I'm not mad at you. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's like, like what you make me look like? Yeah. No, if you look at it, you can definitely tell. Oh, yeah, that's Devon. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So, you know, uh, well, that okay. was fun. Uh, yeah, bye, folks. Yeah, it was fun. And uh, stay tuned. Uh, I think, um, who do you think I should have next? Oh, we'll talk off camera. Talk off camera? Okay, we'll talk off camera then. Okay. All right, so we're going to sign off. Uh, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this is a uh, not, what, do you, what would you call this? Do we have a name? Do we, no, you there's wanna, no name wanna, yet. 
No we'll, we'll talk off camera. <laughs> All right. So this is a wrap. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. And uh, I guess we call it a paint and chat. If you have a suggestion for the name of what I should call this, uh, please comment below. And as always, you can subscribe to my channel. Give me a comment. Give me an idea of what to call this. You can follow me at my website, liquidmethod.com, or follow me on Instagram, also at liquidmethod.com. All right. Thanks a lot, and I will see you later.